Hi, I'm Redneck Computer Geek. Today we're going to be upgrading all of the lighting fixtures in this side of the garage to these four foot LED light fixtures. But first I want to show you around the garage and show you the different mishmash of fluorescent fixtures and LED lighting that I've been using over the last few years. Just to give you some ideas for your own garage and show you what I ended up coming to a conclusion on. So just in a comparison up next to a regular unit that's about the size. So these are your regular everyday shop lights. These are the ancient fixtures that the original owner of the garage put in. As far as I've been told they actually came out of an old store. Still works. These here, these are actually infrared heaters, and when you turn them on, they have a halogen floodlight that you can set for the direction of the heater. I'll put a link for these down in the description to take a look at them. I love them as far as heat in the wintertime for a directional spot, but they chew up a lot of electricity. Another thing to keep in mind. We've all worked with these little coil buggers. The problem with them is that when they get cold, they just plain don't light up at all. They give off a yellowish light, and if you're working with any kind of video or anything, you'll actually see it phase the video on a digital camera as you're working with it. Another thing to keep in mind if you're a YouTuber. Over here, this is a nifty little contraption that I made and as you'll see there's this attached to it which comes over to this coil over on this side. This is actually a vacuum cleaner cord and for the longest time I ended up needing a light I could throw under a vehicle that I could use. So these are three dollar LED lights from a regular family dollar and this is actually a throwaway fixture that came out of my bathroom when I originally remodeled it eight years ago. Now probably the most ghetto rigged LED setup that I have in the entire garage, which I've actually ended up reusing as temporary lighting in a couple of different locations at this point, is the LED strip lights. Now they come in a couple of different sets. These ones are standard white light. And what I ended up discovering was that daylight set LEDs, yet again, they mess up your digital camera. So you want to buy a cheap version first, test it out, see what it does, and then go from there. Um, the LEDs we're installing today, they're 27 lumens. They're the lower level of daylight. They shouldn't affect the camera, but we're gonna find that out soon. If you set up these strip lights, when they come, you end up with a very small power inverter that you hook up to them, which puts out a 12 volt lead. You also can buy these inverter boxes, which take 110, and they put out a heck of a lot more wattage. This unit currently is just running three strips. It actually has enough wattage in it that it could run a full seven strips, which means I technically could cover my entire garage if this lighting was okay with me using just this one box. All right. Let's do some testing. We're going to turn off all the lighting in the garage. I'm going to turn on a regular fluorescent lamp light that has not been turned on today. The reason being is my garage is about 50 degrees right now and I want to see it power up while it's at a cold temp. And then we're going to power up the LED lamp that we bought. You'll see the difference in the film. What are you doing? <laughs> Alright, so first up we have a regular standard four foot light fixture. So as you can see, power up time, it's colder, covers an okay area, but you still need a lot of them close together. So now, I'm going to unplug that and we're going to plug in our LED. Much 
much faster power up. I would say it probably covers about twice the area. Still going to have to keep them slightly close together. So we've got four to install down through here. We're going to cut the zip ties off of this and get them all spaced out. We'll show you the end result after. Hi, so we've got the three LED light fixtures installed. It's about 45 degrees. Let's see how they do. Not bad. So we'll walk through. I'll show you different projects so you can see the difference in the lighting. There's three of them. One, two, three. This is our GT6000 custom winch setup with plow gear, chains, and everything. You can find a video on that. This is not the norm. Um, it's actually got a central transmission with a drive shaft running to another transmission in the rear. Cool little project. Look it up. We just upgraded it. It's a lot faster now. And we got on the end of the lighting, we've got our big bore air rifle. And of course, the world famous gas powered power wheel. Going to be doing something different with that this year. So we'll come down here and we'll turn around. And as you can see, the general work area is just amazingly bright at this point. Now I'm still going to leave this fluorescent lighting, uh, not this fluorescent lighting, this one here on just a regular power cord because that way I can throw it in under vehicles and all kinds of other stuff. I'm probably going to glue the end of the power cord in some form. I'm thinking five ton epoxy into the plug hole there. That way it doesn't pull out when I'm using it. But yeah, these, if you just put a regular cord on them, would make amazing undercarriage lighting when you're working outside. Well guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. We're going to be doing a lot more upgrades and homesteading videos this year, but I will be doing some of the mud mower stuff and the creative builds. So hit subscribe, check out our other stuff, and have a good day.